I love Vessi shoes. Have you checked them out? Have you looked at them? Have you felt the comfortability? So yeah, they're 100% waterproof. It's a knit sneaker. They're totally breathable. You'd think, you know, hey, they're gonna hold all the water out. It's gonna hold all the heat in. Lies. They're perfect. They're so cool. Honestly, it's like wearing a sock. They're made of Dymatex material. I've been trying to get that word all day. (laughs) So guys, whatever activities you like day to day, you're gonna be able to find a pair of Vessies. They're a really good looking kind of shoe. They have so many colors. I'm not gonna lie to you. You're not gonna regret it. These are one of those things I'm excited to tell you about. Something I've really used myself and I'm just like, this is it. Yes. So Vessie.com slash boo. Use my code boo. Vessie.com slash boo. B-O-O. Use my code boo. Get 25% off your pair of Vessie. The Haunted Estate. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Haunted Estate. Here with your host, yep, that's me, Selena Spooky Boo, the internet's favorite spooky weirdo. Can I even say that? Anyways, I thought this week it would be really fun just to be me and you, and I'm going to sit here and stare across at the other desk, and I'm going to pretend that you're here no matter who you are, because sometimes in the world, no matter what's going on, we all feel kind of lonely. So this one is for you and for me, just us besties in my basement, which I totally have to clean. <laughs> um, last night I was up super late. It was probably like 4am. I go through these weird phases in my life where I kind of just feel strange. I wouldn't say it's depressed. I don't know if that would be the word, I don't feel sad. I don't feel like happy. I don't, I don't know what I feel. It's very strange. I'm just not content. That would be the word. I'm not content. And little tiny things that usually wouldn't bother me do. A couple years ago, I watched the movie The Secret and it really changed my life. And I kind of discovered manifesting too. And it really showed me that anything is possible you know, law of attraction and stuff like that. You can kind of just get whatever you want if you focus on it and you fight for it and you work at it. So I spend most of my time trying to just be kick-ass at that and focus at it completely. And no matter what, I, I don't let that negative thought in and I don't let that thing affect me because it's my own story and everyone is the main character of their own story and I'll figure it out in a different way. But then I have times where I lose sight of that. And I find myself falling back into old patterns. Haunted, I guess, by things that happened and things that didn't happen. That's what I like about this podcast. I want the haunted estate to be all over the board. I want it to always have some kind of undertone that things are serious. But I want to be able to change what we're talking about. So today's going to be an old school episode. I'm just going to connect with you guys, tell you what's been going on and how I've been feeling. And then of course today, for the first time since the restart of The Haunted Estate, I want to go over a bunch of ghost stories with you guys and just kind of talk about them and what we think. (laughs) But like I said, I go through these weird periods where I stay up really, really late at night. And it's not that I'm not tired. It's just that my brain won't stop. It goes and it goes and it convinces me of things and I start scrolling. (laughs) Social media is amazing and it changed my entire life from the top to the bottom. I can never thank you guys enough for giving me this opportunity to be your friend. I spent so much time where nobody would give me the time of day knowing that millions of people watch me. It's strange. It's intimidating. But it's so fun. And it's amazing. And I never guys, I never want you guys to think that I'm not thankful. But I do go through these moments and it seems to all kind of come at once. I do deal with body image a bit. I like who I am. I'm a bigger girl and that's fine. But the truth is, is that I'm not healthy. 
I remember going to the doctor a little over a year ago and I definitely haven't been back when I'm supposed to have been back and definitely didn't get the blood work done that I was supposed to because after the first set it scared the shit out of me and I convinced myself I'll just stop doing these things and I'll try being better and I'll wait and I'll redo that blood work in like a year from now and the doctor will be like oh my gosh you're so healthy how'd you do it you're not like dying anymore but here we are a year later and I'm still in the same patterns that I was I've always had an issue with food. I I eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm sad. I eat when I celebrate. I love food. I love tasting food. I love food, but I don't back that up with the right choices for food or, you know, exercising as I should. I'm definitely not taking care of myself. I am 100%. 100% for living as you truly be. And I don't believe, you know, in this society's standards. If I could be the size that I am and not be like virtually dying, I don't want to scare you guys. I'm not dying, but my doctor made it very clear that I'm at a serious, serious point in my life when it comes to my health. But like, if I could be this size and be healthy, I would love that. I just wish that I had the power to take care of myself in the way that I try to take care of people around me it's hard and I feel like every single one of us struggle with that we want everyone around us to be happy and to be healthy and to be safe and then I'm not taking care of me and I feel it and I'm sick all the time I know we hear the same thing from a lot of body positive influencers and I'm sure that they can agree with me it's harder being bigger in this industry I've been fighting really hard with feeling invisible and that's something I've been afraid to say because from people looking out at me they say okay you get millions of views on videos you get all of these things all of this great stuff happens yeah and I'm so thankful but there's so many things that go on behind the scenes that break my heart a little bit. Like, literally getting passed up by things, knowing why. Not getting invited to things, knowing that I don't fit the image. And that's what needs to change in our society. It's crazy when someone who's done half the work with, you know, 0.0% the following was against you for an opportunity. And they got it just because they're prettier. They fit more into what society wants to see, but that's not their fault. It's not. And I'm glad they had the opportunity, but can't take away from me that it hurts me. I just want everyone to be treated equally. I feel stupid for even complaining, but I find myself so caught up in it. The world of the influencer is strange. And the one rule that seems to kind of follow between all influencers is you act nice to each other. If you're mean to each other, you don't talk about it. But of course, you know, we have the drama channels. But I've, I've walked into the opportunity where I've spoken to someone about maybe a collab or something. And they've said, you know, I tend to collab with people more like this. And they send a picture of someone, you know, I don't even want to say a name, but you know what I'm talking about. And, um them not writing back and knowing, you know, why. Yeah. This is the best job I've ever had. Being able to tell you guys how amazing you are. Because you are. And how things are going to change has just been the best thing. It's a lot of responsibility. But I couldn't ever imagine this not being my life now. I just, I want to always stay humble. I'm still shocked when I get a message from somebody who I have followed my whole life. That will never change. I wake up in the morning and I stand at my front window and I look at the sun and I'm like, wow, if you would have told me that two years ago this would be my life, I wouldn't believe you. Because I've lived in dark places and that's why I think I can handle this job. It's taught me so much about myself It's taught me that I'm stronger than I could ever believe. It's taught me that it's okay to have these moments of weakness and it's okay to ask for help. 
I love BetterHelp because it's an online way to reach out for help. It's professional counseling from home, on the phone, or video. Sometimes it can just be the simplest thing inside yourself that is unsettling you and keeping you from achieving your goals, and you just need to talk it out with someone. Like, what's interfering with your happiness? At BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, they will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you'll be able to connect in a private online environment. You can honestly start talking to someone as soon as, like, 48 hours. What I like about BetterHelp is that it isn't a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is literally professional counseling done securely online. I've found in the past with crisis lines and stuff, it's so hard to like build a relationship with somebody. And this way, you are literally going to have a counselor at your fingertips that you can message anytime that's going to have your back, know your story, and really help you help yourself. We all know that there's nothing more awkward or inconvenient than pulling up to an office, going into a receptionist, being like, yes, I'm here for my appointment, than sitting awkwardly in a waiting room. That's the fun thing about BetterHelp. You're literally going to get in quick. You don't have to sit in a comfortable waiting room. And they're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And best part of all, guys, it is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Honestly, it also is worldwide, which is amazing because we know that I am in Canada. They have counselors that specialize in so many different things. Here are just a few. Depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQ matters, grief, and self-esteem. And don't forget, anything that you are going to share here, 100% is going to be confidential. So don't forget, it is convenient, professional, and affordable. There's tons of testimonials on their site. Make sure that you check it out. It is betterhelp.com, betterhelp.com. Guys, I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash The Haunted Estate. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash The Haunted Estate. I'm going to tell you, I just started using this service and for what I've been dealing with, it's been interesting to hear someone else's, you know, thoughts on it, which has been amazing. I hope you guys check it out. (laughs) <laughs> I really wonder if what I'm going through is just some kind of seasonal depression, but it just doesn't make sense because this is my season, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just feel like so many things in my life are coming together, but nothing has happened yet. And, you know, this job, I have a lot of people that I don't want to let down. And I'm always afraid, you know, that I will. I just appreciate you guys that you're here and you talk to me and honestly I do feel loved by you guys a lot it's just weird who I am in the middle of the night is so different to who I am last night it was about four o'clock in the morning three or four and I was just kind of like watching lightning and I was like I should just go record a podcast right now and just talk about all these things that I'm feeling and how weird I'm feeling and how scared I am of dying and and you know how scared I am of losing my mom and But it's weird who I am in the middle of the night. It's just, it's not who I am during the day. And I wonder what that is. I can think really differently at night and I see things. And just lately, my creativeness has just been gone. And I hate that because I used to post a TikTok every single day. And I'm just not anymore and I like sit and I try and come up with ideas where before it was just so easy and now I'm, I'm just not able to think of as much. And it kind of like when it comes to social media, it's really weird. You can do so well on one app and really bad somewhere else. And I wish it didn't stress me out so much, but it, it is hard to watch people do so well around you. Like my TikTok popping off. That always does so well, and I'm thankful for that. But I live in Canada, and there's no creator fund. So, like, I don't get paid. Where I get paid is YouTube. Do you know what I mean? And it's weird to have 20 mil- 21 million followers and be like, guys, please come see me on YouTube. And I literally have less than 500,000 on there. I don't even get 30,000 views a video. Like, that's that makes me feel... I think that's what hurts me the most. I'm like, okay, people enjoy me for you know, 50 seconds. 
but they don't really care about me but you guys do because you're the OGs. I know I'm going to get messages about this podcast telling me to stop being an entitled little bitch, but this job, if you're not in it, it's hard to understand it. It's the best job in the world, but it does have its moments like any job does, but I am forever, forever thankful, my dudes. I just like the fact that I started this podcast the first time in like 2014 or 2015 and I would just talk about haunted history and it was so strange because I, I didn't have a following. I didn't at all. Um, I, I remember I would get like 40 views an episode and I would be like over the moon and I was like, oh my God, I got 40 views. I was always so excited. It's freaking awesome. And I would get like one comment and it would be like, I love this. And I would like print it out or I'd write it on a sticky note and I put it on my computer and I would like sit in my office up in my bedroom and I would like record these podcasts and get so spooked out. And I remember, um, after I started actually, I went in the local parade with my hearse with like the haunted estate banner on it and like nobody listened to it, but I was just so happy to be there. And that's how I feel now. Like when I meet you guys in public, it's just the best vibe ever. But that's that podcast back then, like I didn't have any pull, so there were no guests. Do you know what I mean? Like I never had anyone on. No one took it seriously. And and now it's becoming like this this big wonderful thing. And I'm I'm so thankful. And that's kind of why I wanted to pull it back to where it was. Because back then I did talk about my life and I talked about scary stuff and I talked in a different way and it, it was really fun. And and I miss that. So that's why this episode I thought, no camera, just audio you and me. We're just going to do this. We're going to talk about our lives and we're going to get into some spooky stuff. So I went through my submission form. So the hauntedestate.com, guys, if you want to submit a story or anything like that, it's the hauntedestate.com. I was going through stories. I'm going to be honest with you. If it ain't quite a few paragraphs, I'm not going to print it off because there's just not enough there for me to like talk about. So I went through and I pulled off some interesting looking stories. I, we're honestly going into this together. I haven't read any of these. So we're going to go into this. We are going to read them and maybe we'll talk about them a little bit. Maybe it'll trigger some stories in you and you can head over to thehondestate.com and hit that submission form and send me something. <laughs> Don't forget also, wherever you are listening to this podcast, please rate and review it, especially on Apple Podcasts. That is how we move up in the charts. Anyways, let's jump in to our first story. Hi, Selena. Love all your TikToks and your podcasts. As I'm sure you're probably swamped with emails, I'll try to keep this short and to the point. Send me your long stories, baby. (laughs) My Scottish grandparents moved to South Africa in the late 70s and bought the house that my sister and mom currently live in. My grandmother was a witch of some sort. Not one of my family will go into depth to explain it to me because they're all super Christian and want to avoid the topic. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they died when I was still pretty long, pretty young, and, and they left the house to my sister and I, the one that still lives in. She, It is definitely haunted, and my family members and friends agree that there is just an uneasy feeling about it. My sister and my mom and I have had some pretty freaky experiences. I don't know if you'd be interested in hearing about it. My friends and I have had a lot of paranormal experiences that we'd rather not think about, like dreams. We often wonder if a spirit has attached itself to me because creepy shit seems to follow me no matter where I go. I would obviously be really cool to have on your show. However, that's probably not likely. But I'd also like to talk to someone who's had as many paranormal experiences as I had. Looking forward to hearing to you. Please send your stories in. I would love to read your stories. I think it's awesome that you have a witchy grandma. Who doesn't want a witchy grandma? My mom was super witchy and my... I don't know much about my dad's side, but I really like whispers of whispers of things whispers of some things not enough to like talk about but like he's like a first generation born here um where like they were from Hungary and stuff and it just yeah it seems it's a, it's an interesting story maybe we'll go into it sometime <laughs> so this one's from Grayson Wild hi Selena thank you for giving me the opportunity to write to you my story I hope you consider sharing this experience of mine with your listeners. I'm sorry this is such a long story, and I hope it doesn't take up too much of your episode. I would love that. (laughs) My name is Grayson. I live in Blackpool, UK. A few years ago, I used to live in the south of UK in Weston-Super-Mare. I lived with a good friend, we'll call him Harry. 
When Harry and I lived together, I would often hear in the early hours of the morning cupboards being opened and closed, doors creaking, and footsteps. For a few weeks, I would often assume that this was Harry, as he was normally an early riser. As the weeks went by, I remember a distinct morning. I was awoken to the loud thumping in the kitchen at 3.44 a.m. In my sleep-ridden state, I thought again that this was Harry. Assuming all was well, I went back to sleep. When the morning came, I asked Harry what he was doing up so early and what all that noise was about. It was at this moment he looked at me and giggled. In confusion, I thought I had dreamt the experience. I was almost ready to forget about it. Harry, in a straight face, said to me, It's the house ghost. Not being a believer at the time, I brushed this off as a joke. Harry again said, No, I'm serious. It's the ghost. It's nothing negative, but a ghost that likes to move around in the morning. It's forever banging around. Left wondering, I sort of semi-brushed it off and took his word that it wasn't anything negative and that it was nothing to be concerned about. Morning after morning, the banging would happen and I would catch a bid with my friend an act of winding me up. I sneak out into the hallway to finally see for myself. A loud bang from the kitchen is heard. I slowly step out of bed, somewhat shaking with the fear that I'm about to witness. I take quiet, light, fragile steps as I inch closer to my bedroom door. Another loud bang. With great stealth, I slowly open my door and I am faced with the space like blackness that is the hallway. No light to be seen except the occasional flash of the smoke alarm, lighting my way for a fraction of a second. Silence. I had never, never had I thought the sound of silence would be so terrifying. As I inch closer and closer to the source of the sound, the adrenaline takes over my body. I hit the light switch and the house lights up. My eyes are hot by the blinding light and I take a second to focus my vision. Nobody's there. It's silent, but something is amiss. Cupboards are open, saucepans are on the floor, and the fridge is ajar. I frantically put everything in its place and determine not to give this entity that I once didn't believe was negative the fear that it could feed from. I reset the home and return to bed. Needless to say, I wasn't able to disbelieve any of this now. A few more days passed and with the noises every single night, sometimes quiet, but often loud enough to wake me up in shock, I took it upon myself to try and find out what could be done. And then the caption says, I'm sorry, Selena, but I know you won't be happy about this. A friend and I decided <laughs> that as the entity hadn't caused any problems, that it would be safe to try and communicate with it. Oh, God. <coughs> you got a Ouija board, don't you? Therefore, we be interested a Ouija board. Great. Something's throwing stuff around your house. And you're like, well, we need to talk. We need to calm Karen down. <laughs> the sun set and the night was quiet. We turned off all the lights and electronic devices. There was an uneasy silence about the atmosphere. You could hear the leaves brushing in the wind, the sparse car driving past in the quiet hum of the refrigerator. Some candles were lit. We sat down. We created a peaceful space and a scene was set. Is anybody there? A minute of silence. If anybody is there, can you communicate with us? Another minute of silence. These gaps felt like hours, just waiting for some kind of sign. Now I felt like I was being silly. Maybe we both were. Maybe we were just being crazy and trying something we knew nothing about. To lighten the mood, I began to move the Ouija disc and gain some kind of reaction from Harry. He looked at me, knowing I was doing the action and softly said, that isn't going to work. I stopped, let go of the disc and proposed that we put it away and try again another time. Harry insisted we try again. So we did. I sat back down and placed my hands on the disc and remained quiet. The disc began to move. Cut it out, Grayson, Harry said with a more firm tone. I'm not doing it. It's obviously you. You're trying to do to me what I did to you. Harry was adamant that he had nothing to do with the movements. The disc squeaks along the board. First H, then A, R, a small movement around the letters and back to R. I was done. I knew he was messing me about. I let go. I picked up the board and I put it away. That was the end. All was forgotten about. We watched a horror movie, had a laugh, and we went to our appropriate bedrooms. 
I slept soundly that night. Not a noise to be heard. It was bliss. I had slept so well, I woke up in a terrific mood. As the morning got underway, I deemed it fit to complete some housework. As I was working away, the tabletop, which I had put the Ouija board on, was emptied and cleaned. I neatly placed everything back on the table. Lastly was the board. I picked up the heavy board and placed it down and wiped it clean. As my friend moved over the board, I froze. I felt a wave of cold go from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. I stood there for a second in absolute fear. What was I looking at? There it was. Or was it more like... Was it the letter Y? The glass top disturbed with not a mark on it, but underneath the perm, any fixture of glass was the letter Y, with what can only be described as a punched fracture, like if you were to punch a windscreen. You won't shatter it around you, but there's an impact point with cracks around it. I immediately told Harry and asked him if he knew anything about it. In a stunned and shaken voice, he shuddered and said, Absolutely not. We spoke about what was being spelt the night before, and we could only conclude that it had to be a name. The name Harry. The board was put away for good after this, and it's never been taken out again. The noises have stopped, though. We don't know what it was, but it's apparently gone away. All we know is... We got away lightly, and I will never touch a Ouija board again. Um, yeah, maybe don't. <laughs> um, people always ask me why I have so many Ouija boards, because I literally have, like, 40 of them. And I just, like, want to keep them out of people's hands. Like, I know you're, like, looking at this, like, piece of cardboard. You're like, how could this ever bring a demon into my house? It's not the board, my dudes. It's the intention, even if you do it on paper. Have we not learned in, like, the last two years that the world is weird and anything is predictable? Is possible? Sorry. Predictable. Might as well. <laughs> the world is so, like, we read books, we see horror movies, and we're like, nah, that couldn't happen. And I'm going to tell you right now, like I've said in other podcasts, like, sometimes I look at the things, like, the memory of the things I've seen, and I'm like, how did that, how is that possible? But I lived through it. So let's just not, like, call out to things that we don't know what they are. And don't forget, sometimes these things that we call out to, you know, they're disguised as other things. I just need to be honest with you. Get educated on it. I'm not going to tell you not to play with a Ouija board. I'm not going to say, don't do it. Don't get out these apps. Don't do that. But protect yourself. Google it. Honestly, that's all you have to do is Google it. I love Vessi shoes. Have you checked them out? Have you looked at them? Have you felt their comfortability? They're so magic, guys. Um, I have a few pairs. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have a dog walking pair of Vessies. I have my inside shoes. Do you know when you go to school and you would get inside shoes? I have inside shoes. And you know what my Vessies aren't? They're not haunted. They haunt my feet with delight. <laughs> these shoes are amazing guys they're so comfortable they feel like you have socks on your feet with all that added protection not only that they are 100 percent waterproof i'm gonna be honest i like to frolic in the forest when i see a puddle am i gonna jump in it heck yeah if nobody's looking actually i'm lying if somebody's looking i'm still gonna jump in it and i usually end up trudging back to my car with super wet feet but not anymore because of vessi so yeah they're 100 waterproof it's a knit sneaker they're totally breathable. You'd think, you know, hey, they're going to hold all the water out. It's going to hold all the heat in. Lies. They're perfect. They're so cool. Honestly, it's like wearing a sock. They're made of dyne, Dymatex material. I've been trying to get that word all day. It is the first dual climate knit material. It regulates temperature. So when you wear them in the winter, it keeps your feet warm. But in the summer, the sweat and heat escape. Yes, you can wear them in the winter. I am in Canada. They are made in Canada. That is literally, that is the vibe. You want a runner that you can wear because boots, boots are kind of ugly and these are not ugly. They're also super easy to keep clean. You can rinse them with water. You can toss them in the washing machine, give them a day to dry. Like that's sick. And they're highly stretchable, which I love. I have kind of wide feet. So does my husband. So we both love them. They're going to fit you if you got skinny feet. They're going to fit you if you have big feet. And just like everything, we love it when we're vegan. They're 100% vegan. They have grip for all weather. There's literally a herringbone tread pattern. It is designed to provide traction whether you're hiking in the city, caught up in the storm. And this is my favorite, guys. They have antimicrobial insoles, which means that your stinky feet ain't gonna transfer the shoe. You know what? I can't tell you how much. Like, I used to throw out sneakers and, like, remember those ballet flats we used to wear? Always have to throw them out because the fake got the stank. <laughs> 
<laughs> so guys, whatever activities you like day to day, you're going to be able to find a pair of besties. They're a really good looking kind of shoe. They have so many colors, so many different designs. I have a whole bunch of them at this point and they just make me feel good about myself. Nothing like throwing on a fresh pair of sneaks. I feel like you guys know how much I attract just drama to my life. I feel like every video I look at, I have smudges on my shirts and stuff. And that's what I like about Vessi is how easily they are to clean and like keep looking good. Like I will never forget. Did you guys ever wear like those fake Ugg looking boots growing up? I wasn't cool enough to have like the actual Uggs, but I wore them all the time, guys. And they were so gross and they were always wet inside. And I look back at these pictures and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm so excited to look at Vessi back at Vessi and be like, yes, these are what I'm wearing. I feel like an adult. I feel like I am you know what it is it's one of those like drama free kind of shoes which is what i need in my life less drama anyways guys please check out vessi.com use my code boo all capitals for 25 dollars off your pair of vessies i'm i'm not gonna lie to you. you're not gonna regret it these are one of those things i'm excited to tell you about something i've really used myself and i'm just like this is it yes so vessi.com slash boo use my code boo vessi.com slash boo b-o-o use my code boo get 25 percent off yo pair of vessi okay guys let's jump in i'm really i'm loving these ghost stories it's really well written though thank you i feel like i could feel your english accent through this and i liked it okay did you even say your english did i just like assume that hold on no okay you are in the uk not crazy m but you know <laughs> Okay. Hi, Selena. My name is Sarah and I live in Woodstock. <gasps> hi. Hello, fellow Woodstonian. I love your podcast and everything history. I've actually gone to Salem three times and I plan on going again. If it's not on your bucket list, I highly suggest it. Um, yes, please. Weirdly, this printed weird. I'm hoping I can still read it. <laughs> um, I believe in ghosts. I always have. I've only experienced something when I was younger, but that's another story. Today is the one about the building I work in. I won't say exactly where I work, but that it's a local business. The building is very old. My boss and her husband have looked up the history and they couldn't even be sure of the exact year it was built. I believe in ghosts and I always have. I've only experienced something when I was younger, but that's another story. For today, it's about a building I work in. I won't say exactly where I work, but it's a local business. The building is very old. My boss and her husband have looked up the history, but they couldn't even be sure what year it was built. I've been at my job for over a decade, and a lot of employees have experienced things. One employee was working on a Saturday alone, or so she thought. She was cleaning up before leaving when she thought she saw movements upstairs where our office is. The employee thought the boss hadn't left for the day, so she went up the stairs and walked around. She was completely alone. Another employment has seen a woman around the office mainly in our surgery room, and she did remember seeing one sitting at the desk with another employee. We were talking, and all of a sudden she gasped. She said, I saw a woman walk in the waiting room and disappear. She then left me alone with the other employees. They have also seen the lady around the office. They say she seems friendly and means no harm. I have a feeling that I'm being watched sometimes. I've experienced a couple of things. My first experience was on a Saturday many years ago. It was just me and another employee. We were upstairs, and I went back to the main floor. I heard the other employee calling my name, not yelling at me, more like she was in the other room. I replied, yes, I am over here, and I kept hearing her near the lab. The employee came downstairs, and she looked at me frustrated. I looked at her and said, what's up? She looked at me stunned and said, were you calling my name? We both went white and got the hell out of there. My latest experience was less than a year ago. Myself and two other employees were in the lab. All of a sudden, cupboard doors fly open. Not just partially open, but wide open. We all looked at each other and booked it out of there. There are so many other stories surrounding, surrounding this building. I wish I could share them all with you. Anyways, thank you for reading my story, Sarah. Some of the words were cut off there on the edges, so I hope I got that one out enough. That is really cool. I'm trying to picture... Like, I live in, like, a town, but there are so many old buildings, and there are a lot of, like, you know, medical offices and stuff around here that have, like, offices in it, like, doctor stuff and dentist places. So, oh, Sarah, I hope I hear from you. <laughs> I'm so freaking curious now, my dude. We have this one building um, on Princess Street, and it is it used to be an old schoolhouse, <clears throat> and I didn't know that when I was younger, and I went there for, like, an after-hours clinic or something. Maybe it was counseling with my parents. I don't know. But, um... 
I saw this little girl on the stairway and I like looked at my parents and I looked back at her and she was gone. And then I kind of told my parents that and they were like, yeah, this was a school. And we went down to the basement. We saw pictures of like, <clears throat> not the basement, but they had like a historical photo, like on the bottom floor before the basement of like what the school was like. And there's so many ghost stories about there. It was really cool. <clears throat> and I re recently went and saw a house that was for sale here in town. I couldn't make it work, but like I had such a great idea. So um, this house in Woodstock is the Carbide House and nothing i've never heard ghost stories it's always been privately owned it recently became a bed and breakfast but when i was a kid i went to a garage sale there and i had to go to the washroom and my mom was like i'm so sorry can my kid like use your washroom and the one woman's like yep go up like through the kitchen around to the front of the house and there's a washroom right at the front door because we were near the backyard and she just sends me in and i remember like walking through around and i just saw like this woman standing there and she looked like a nun like she like definitely was like I'm pretty sure and I'm and like here I'm gonna tell you the coolest thing in a second <clears throat> so my dad had only ever known it was like the scientist house and that had been like a couple things over the years so that happened when I was a kid and I thought this was just someone who lived there or something like that <clears throat> it wasn't I ended up finding out it was a place where like nuns lived <laughs> which was super interesting and a little sus so I got convinced that I really wanted to buy this house but it was a lot of house, guys. Um, it has like eight bedrooms. Every bedroom had a bathroom. The house was built in the 1800s. And there was like two flights of stairs. Like it was it was the coolest house ever. But at the end of the day, it had like literally no property. It was just all house. And Adam was like, no, nah, man, I don't think that we can, uh, we can do that. So I didn't end up getting it. But like it was, can you imagine? Like it was so weird because I went through it with Joel and Adam and the lady was so nice and it was so weird like seeing that spot where I had saw the nun and her not being there but like it's a bed and breakfast now but it was gorgeous and it's like main okay so there's a basement main floor that had like kitchen living room dining room huge entranceway bathroom second floor had one two like four or five bedrooms all with their own bathrooms then there was another floor with like another four bedrooms and then there was this really weird staircase that went straight up and we went straight up and there was a stage up in the attic which is really weird but going into this house i was 100 percent that we were going to buy this house but once we like sat down and like really talked about it it kind of just didn't make as much sense I really want to live in the country like I really want to live in the country so I'm just gonna like hope to find a big super spooky haunted estate house but like how cool would that be to like broadcast the haunted estate from the haunted estate <laughs> anyways let's get into one more ghost story <clears throat> I remember being quite young and I lived in a small town in New Brunswick we were in a two-story house which the lot was shared with a neighbor about a half acre away I have two older brothers that would come and stay with us sometimes. Our dad is the same, different moms. When my brothers weren't around, I would always play in my room. I remember playing a board game with this little girl. My mom would walk in and ask me what I was doing. I told my mom that this little girl and I were playing board games. Then I would continue to tell my mom that she died because of a fire truck. My mom didn't know what I meant, so she went to our neighbor and asked if there was a little girl who died there. They said yes. There was a house fire that claimed her life. A little after, I was playing in the garden when my mom was cleaning out the yard, and she saw my grandmother come out of the tree line and started to talk to me as I played. My mom stared at me while she cleaned. My grandmother had died years before I was born from a rough cancer battle. My mom asked me who it was I was talking to, and I said, Nanny Hooper. My mom asked me to describe what she looked like, and I had explained what her favorite outfit she always wore looked like, including the color and everything. When I was 18 or so, my best friend's older sister died, and although I'd never been able to see, I could feel spirits around me. I was able to see her, feel her, touch her. I could tell my friend to a T what she was saying and what she looked like, when I'd never met her in person. I was able to get my friend closure with her sister because she felt as though it was partially her fault she had passed away. My friend asked me if she was able to see her again, but I lost my best friend, a different one, not long after the first interaction, which seemed to have closed my openness to spirits. I had other experiences aside these ones, but these were the most notable that I think are kind of cool. Wow, that's really nice. Uh, you're definitely empathic, super, super connected to the things out there in the universe. I feel like we all are. Like when some people are like, no, I'm not. 
absolutely not never have I think it's all perception how you were raised your you know your energy and there's so many ways to kind of like raise your your vibration to be able to see these kind of things and I never want to sound eccentric or anything like that but I just it's a true fact that I I will always I think believe in is we all have the power in us and I think it kind of comes back to how I was talking earlier I, I already feel better just talking to you guys through this podcast you know I'm pretending you're sitting across there <laughs> We have the power in us. Things happen to us. Traumas happen that completely mess us up. Things can help, absolutely. Medication and counseling and all that. We have the power to find happiness again, to find strength and to find love and to believe in ourselves one more time. We always give so many chances to people around us, way more chances than we give ourselves. I think we all need to start being kinder to ourselves, loving ourselves, taking chances on ourselves. Anyways, guys, no matter what you're going through right now, boo crew, no matter how bad it is, everything can change. It can change as quick as tomorrow. It did for me. Sorry for this weird week episode here. I've just been off and very busy. But I just want to say to you guys, I love you so much. Seriously. Thanks for tuning in, boo crew. And I'll see you next week on The Haunted Estate. I love BetterHelp because it's an online way to reach out for help. It's professional counseling from home, on the phone, or video. Sometimes it can just be the simplest thing inside yourself that is unsettling you and keeping you from achieving your goals, and you just need to talk it out with someone. And this way, you are literally going to have a counselor at your fingertips that you can message anytime that's going to have your back, know your story, and really help you help yourself. Make sure that you check it out. It is betterhelp.com, better, H-E-L-P.com.